it was darker than it should have been because there was no money. And so we're in the saloon scene and you couldn't shoot the wall because it was just cardboard, it was painted cardboard. You did another film that was part of a series, uh, The Magnificent Seven. You did The Guns of the Magnificent Seven, which was, of the, all the sequels, it's the best sequel. We had a great time. Great and time. Uh, uh, you shot that in Spain, in Elmira. Yeah. Yes. It was another, I was, you know, my first two films were like, just the Goody Factory. It was like, boy, this is what it's going to be. My, 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 I think I'll, <laughs> I'll hang around a while in Tampa. Yeah. But it was, uh, Yul Brenner said, uh, after the second one, he said, no, I'm not going to do another one mm -hmm. of these. And so when they're going to do it. Ride on. George Kennedy had won his Oscar for Cool Hand Luke, and mm -hmm. next thing they know, they're going to cast him as Yul Brenner and playing the character. And he refused to shave his head? <laughs> yeah. well, he did show up. In, in Europe, it's the hairdresser and makeup. They're the same people. They all can do it. And they beautiful work. And so he showed him, he said, I, I, I brought this with my two, my toupee. I'm going to wear him. <laughs> Remember the guy took it like he was holding a turd or something. <laughs> and, he said, <laughs> and he says, please, senor. I, I, the next day he came back with this most gorgeous, and it was like, you can see it in the movie. It, it's, mm -hmm. it moves, it flows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember George looked at this. And I paid ten thousand dollars for that other piece of crap. <laughs> but, but, uh, if you move any way but backwards, I can lose that eye. Now get out of here. It was a great time. We were in Madrid for three months, and we would drive out every day thirty miles to various locations. Mm -hmm. The cast was... Uh, you know, we had Jim Whitmore in there. Oh, yeah. was so good, always good. James Whitmore, uh, Joe Don Baker, Randy Santoni, uh, Frank Silvera, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Michael Ansara, and the guy who was the French Connection, uh, Fernando Ray. He was yeah, the little... Bernie uh, Casey. Bernie Casey's first film. Yeah, he had great scenes with Joe Don, and that was oh, yeah. early for yeah. Joe Don Baker, too. Yeah. So... Joe was... Uh, well, everybody, all characters. What was he like in that early film, Joe Don? Because he's such a unique character still. Yes. <laughs> I need to dig deeper. <laughs> Joe's an original. I mean, I, there's no question. I mean, he's uh, he was very into everything he was doing, that rag arm, and he was playing that. And he hooked up very early with a beautiful Spanish. Uh, Good for him. Yeah, so, <laughs> a stunt, stunt lady. Mm -hmm. And she wore wearing miniskirt. Now this is 67. Mm -hmm. She's wearing miniskirt. And this is in Madrid. And in Madrid, everybody will look at your shoes and you're walking, they'll look at, and the women were like, when that girl with the skirt was most scandalous. And Joe bought himself one of these Matador, uh, the Hilronia cape. <laughs> And he'd wear that cape, and he'd walk in, and they'd all look at him and say, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? And I kept saying, oh, we're going to get killed here. That was great. Mm -hmm. But uh, the big uh, bullfighting, uh, San Ysidro Fest was on, and at this time, there was a young man called Cordobase. And he'd completely galvanized the entire and revitalized the entire, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, it was, that time it was like a, uh, worse than fixed fighting. It was shaving the bull's head mm -hmm. and dropping weights on their humps so that everything was, a, and then this kid comes in and it was just phenomenal. And we saw him fight about five times during the three month period. They come in and out and uh, Ordonez and Paco Camino, they were just standing on the side watching him. He said, the kids brought it back, you know, he uh -huh. got, these were the major players. So, but John, he, he would wear his cape. He'd go into the giant uh, Bentus, the Coliseum and looking around and have this girl in a miniskirt, and it was like, uh, they were an attraction, and he, but he was, it was just great. Well, yeah. he is unique, and he really always delivers. Always, always. Know, was, everybody solid. was, Whitmore, Jimmy became a great friend. I mean, mm -hmm. a, an honored, mm -hmm. honored friend. I mean, I, it's another great spirit, great person, great talent, great man. You always deliver too, and, and as I, I said earlier, the, the similarity between you and Jim Garner in terms of your persona on screen, Bill Bauer must have noticed it because he was the writer of uh, Support Your Local yeah. Sheriff and he wrote Shame Shame on the Bixby Boys that you are the star. 
that was a great story. It was a great script. It was to be Jimmy Garner, and it just never got made, never got made. So Bill gave it to his uh, son, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Bowers, to do. And a young man called uh, Terry Frazee was in to give some money. And we're shooting at the old Paramount Ranch. And uh, I don't know if anyone knew it, it was nine-tenths or eight-tenths to scale so that everybody looked bigger walking around. It was amazing, you know, you walk under that. <laughs> it was a hoot on Gunfight at the OK Corral. And it was Sammy Jackson playing the, the uh, gunslinger character, and I was the sheriff. And D. Cooper, and I don't know if you remember old Dewey Cooper, he was the old sheriff. Everybody was terrific, and the lines that were going down to do the fight at the OK Corral, he said, where are they? They're down at the old corral. <laughs> that sounds familiar, yeah, OK. And they're walking down the street, and Dee turns, and he says, I want you all to know if things turn bad, I'll switch sides, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just wonderful dialogue. I know. Yes. Yeah. And then he said something else, all right, well, let's find out who lives and dies. Come on, and we're off. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, uh, it was just yeah. a good time, a yeah. good time. And it was Tony Fra uh, Frazee, we were running out of money. It was darker than it should have been because there was no money. And so we're in the saloon scene and you couldn't shoot the wall because it was just cardboard, it was painted cardboard. So the light would fall off. And so there's, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was a beautiful Godfather set. And it was, we're doing a happy Western. It was, every time we're interior, it's all dark. Uh, it's, uh, beautifully shot, but uh, it, the cut wasn't as great as we could imagine. And they sat on it and uh, it really had no release at all. But yeah, was, that's too bad, yeah. too bad. Well, you did get to work with Jim Garner again on a Brett Maverick yep, episode. Yeah, that was a, it was a good homecoming. You know, I hadn't mm -hmm. seen him in that time. I'd done some stuff on Warners, and, uh, but it was good, it was good mm -hmm. to do. Another Western that you did that uh, people don't even remember, it starred Kurt Russell and Tim Matheson, huh. The Quest. Oh, it was The uh, Searchers. They did The Searchers mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. it was, it was Basically. damn good. I mean, yeah. Kurt was very much into it, more so than anybody. He mm -hmm. was like uh, very much the Indian. Like to ride, like to be outdoors. Yeah. And you, like you said, it is like the searchers. That, that was Kurt's a, like that. He commit, yeah. uh, he's a damn fine man. Michael O'Hurley, he, I don't know if you mm -hmm. were, he's a brilliant director. He was a great friend, mentor, directing mentor for me. He was directing, and I was, we went out to Albertson's Ranch, and uh, that was well before there was Westlake. And then, uh, big morning out there, and Michael was very dry about everything. Monty, we're doing this, and I said, it's fine. <laughs> Irishman, was, but uh, we, uh, it was the morning, and the, the mist is in, and you can hear the, the uh, um, caterer backing his truck in and out, and he can't see, and then they've got the trailer on it, and you're yelling back and forth at each other, and then finally I get out, and I said, well, what's for lunch? And, uh, he said, same thing. Mm -hmm. and, Chateaubriand and french fries. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> the smoke clears and I'm looking, there's Michael way a distance sitting in a chair and I see a black Chevy come in and it's got a big CBS on the side of it. Uh, the, the strip had to do with um, like a Donner party. It was a, mm -hmm. um, a wagon train had been, and I'm a cattle driving, I had my cattle drive through. And so they've been all dying and starving to death and they were gonna eat each other or what's gonna happen. What about all that cattle? I know. I was bringing the cattle. <laughs> so we, the car comes out in there, and there's a, there was a, a snake and, and a rat and this kind of thing that the people are looking at. <laughs> but anyway, the car comes in, and the CBS is on the side, and the guy hands him an envelope. Michael pulls it out, looking at it. Monty, I have a, you know, I walked over. He said, I have directions and notes from the network. It said, in the scene where you're in, so it said, do not sensationalize the rat. He said, Monty, how do you sensationalize a rat? <laughs> That's when I think of Quest, I think of that moment. <laughs> you mentioned Lynn Stallmaster, mm. uh, casting director. I know it's so important uh, to, to find a casting company or a, a person that likes you. So Lynn, I think, was involved in a lot of uh, the, the great parts you got. Yeah, he was... There, there are, you know, they finally got credit for casting director. There are casting directors, then there are casting directors. Well, I will always be indebted. I mean, he... He's legendary. He, yeah, he pulled me yeah. into that. He's yeah. just a, it was a great, great man and a great mm -hmm. talent. And uh, it, it's so important for putting a cast together. Mm -hmm. It's very different now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, horrible. 
Oh, it is. You, I it's mean, like, no, but, you, nobody's even there, but the video. But good director. casting directors will say that drives them crazy because decisions are made by everybody mm -hmm. and, 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 and quotas and uh, ways they have to do this and that. And it's, uh, it's taken out of their hands. And really, the great ones will work hard and only when they can. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway. I know you're, you're doing a lot of uh, documentaries now and that uh, you reinvented yourself in, in a different profession. Well, I dropped out for the uh, opportunity in 92 to put a company together and uh, produce and direct our own documentaries independently for A&E. We created the biography series. I formed a corporation with my wife, Claire, and my son, Jason, and we put the house up, guaranteed we'd deliver 13 hours of air combat for a million dollars, and we did. They wanted 13 more, then they said, we're gonna do the, a new biography series. We pitched 10 of those. So it became, Claire and I hit the road uh, with a DP. Um, later on, we'd be filming in China. We'd film, uh, again, all over the world, and suddenly 20 years go by. I could never act. Uh, they call me, I'm not available. So then about 2010, we closed down and just to select subjects, and then I went back to acting. Everything had changed. Everybody knew it was either dead or out of the business or running a studio. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly casting directors. But what a wonderful adventure that oh, must have been. Oh, that traveling. was, I can't look. I, that's why we kept doing it. It's like it's a goodie factor of the world. It was uh, from everywhere from the Amazon to the Arctic. And uh, four hours of the Royal Navy with Prince Andrew. And uh, it was just a great ride. Thank God it was put on the plate in front of me. I was really burned out by a lot of, I mean, I'd done, I was doing Baywatch and directing, and we were first year of syndication, and I was going crazy, and it was great. But it was kind of, you know, consummate tits and ass, and... Uh, <laughs> in slow motion. In slow motion. <laughs> yeah. Can they warn you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a hit at my house. No, no, I'm kidding. It's right, it's back on, uh, I got a call from producers. It, it sold to Netflix, you know, the whole thing. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, we get a few Great. checks coming in. A few, yeah. yeah. Well, your voice uh, is so wonderful for narration, too, and I, I just want to thank you for sharing your stories with us my today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Monty. Very thank you very much. Okay. Obviously, you love Westerns like we do, or you wouldn't have tuned in. We'd like to keep you happy. I want to be happy. I want to see more Westerns. Every Sunday, we post a new one. If you subscribe, like, comment, and then ring that bell, you won't miss a one. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching.